Technocratic Tyranny – Everything You Must Know Due to the nature of technocracy, it's inevitable that the words technocratic and tyranny eventually end up in the same sentence. Although technocracy is generally regarded as a form of government, technocracy is perhaps better understood in combination with communitarianism. In this sense, technocracy is considered the hardware of a government system, while communitarianism is considered the software of that system. Prepare to wisen up about global tyranny and its best means of spreading like a virus. This is Big Brain Tech. Tap that like button, subscribe, and be warned. Unelected Tyranny Technocracy is the unelected politicians in office and the unelected policy and decision makers in a government complex. Communitarianism is the political religion that is implemented through, for instance, a technocratic form of government. Both technocracy and communitarianism, both on their own and in combination with each other, eventually and inescapably result in tyranny, unelected tyranny. Unlike the Nazi era, tyranny wherein Adolf Hitler was voluntarily voted into office of dictator by the public, a technocratic tyranny is established without the explicit consent of a majority within the public of a country. A technocratic tyranny is, in the end, imposed by individuals who didn't participate in elections in order to become policy or decision makers in a government complex. The fact that those individuals are not elected by the people means that these individuals don't represent the people, so the public ends up living under a government system without having any binding or enforceable representation in government. Centralized Tyranny Exactly because a technocracy requires unelected individuals in office, it's unavoidable that those individuals will end up consolidating their power in a government complex and their influence in society. Consolidation of power and influence therefore results in the centralization of power and influence. This centralization then further widens the gap between the people and the government. Eventually, the government becomes disconnected from the public which leads to a tyranny. History is full of examples of people losing control over their governments and being forced into a tyranny. In the previous century, for instance, we had the tyranny in Nazi Germany, the tyranny in Soviet Russia, the tyranny of the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia, and the emergence of the EU system, which has morphed from a pseudo-democratic system into the technocratic tyranny it is today. There are no examples in history of centralization of power resulting in lasting and prosperous societies. Technocracy itself, by definition, prevents it. The Constitution Technocrats operate outside the Constitution simply because of the fact that they are not elected and therefore don't represent the people. Their acceptance by the public is voluntary. In most countries, though, people can resist and remove technocrats through the Constitution but fewer and fewer people do so because they have no interest in politics, which leads to the erosion of a constitution. That erosion is precisely what technocrats want to see happening, because a constitution limits technocrats their abilities to make decisions and to impose policies that were designed by themselves. Every tyranny, technocratic or not, is made legally possible by amending, altering, or rewriting a country's constitution. On the legal side, that's what technocrats want to achieve. Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we... Communitarian Law System In the 21st century, Technocracy has become a global menace, and the reason for that is because it's being implemented and further developed worldwide through a law system that most people have never heard of, the communitarian law system. The communitarian law system is the framework wherein the United Nations system, the European Union system, the Bank for International Settlements, and others, including the World Economic Forum, operate. Unlike a national constitutional law system, this law system is borderless. It's international, it's intercontinental, it's global. The reason why most people have never heard of this law system is because technocrats have no interest in telling the public about it. 
This law system is not secret at all. It's just not supposed to be talked about by members of the general public. Here's the chaos. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there's gonna be a new world order out there. And we've gotta lead it. And we've gotta unite the rest. That the communitarian law system is real and that technocrats have been using it extensively in recent times can be confirmed through the COVID-19 policies of governments worldwide. Since March 11, 2020, the COVID-19 approach of nearly every national government has been based on and enforced through the Constitution of the World Health Organization. The WHO Constitution is a key document in the communitarian law system. So are the UN Charter and the EU Lisbon Treaty. While the WHO Constitution is not a secret document, most people are not aware of its existence. It's because of the alleged mandatory enforcement of the World Health Organization Constitution that heads of government have been following and implementing the various COVID policies that all of us have become familiar with. The lockdowns, the health protocols, the highly synchronized and centralized vaccination campaigns, all of these measures are the result of unelected individuals, technocrats, imposing their decisions on their self-authored policies. If you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. This is not hard to prove. The head of the World Health Organization, Kedros Chebreyesus, who was not elected by the public, together with his team of health experts who were also not elected by the public, are the reasons why national governments have been imposing and enforcing all the COVID measures that we have been exposed to for more than two years already. Put your mask on. Given the massive loss of lives and livelihoods due to the lockdowns themselves, the erosion of social interactions in society, the micromanagement of people's daily lives by corporations and government technocrats, and the micropolitics of national and local governments, we can fairly say that this form of technocratic governments too is tyrannical. Artificial Intelligence All tyrannies of the previous century were trying to build the tyranny of the future. But they all fail, not because of their lack of dedication, hardly, but because the technology at that time was not yet advanced enough for the expectations that they had. Artificial intelligence is changing this, and by now, it's become the most important tool in the technocratic arsenal. Increasingly, decisions are made based on results that AI provides. Take for instance the Aladdin portfolio management software owned by BlackRock the world's biggest and most powerful asset management corporation. Its decisions influence and steal national governments and their policies nearly every day. This AI tells investors which assets to buy and when to buy them, and which ones to sell and when to do so. BlackRock's success, currently also including $10 trillion of assets under management, is entirely built upon Aladdin, the AI. Obviously, technocrats have noticed this and now realize that AI can provide them with the data that is needed to install a form of tyranny that has never been achieved before, the kind of tyranny that Pol Pot, Lenin, and Hitler would definitely marvel at. In order to establish an AI-based technocracy, which by definition would be destined to become an unhinged tyranny, technocrats need data, tons of it. That is why technocrats and their communitarian associates want as many people as possible to work online and from home, and why they want as many people as possible to replace their real-world life with a virtual one. For their new system, they need to know what people do, think, and feel every second of the day, why they do it, with whom, and where. This gives their AI-driven systems millions of data points per individual human and trillions of data points for society as a whole. At any given time, technocrats can then adjust their policies and decisions whenever they see a need for it. The technocratic tyranny of the future, should we fail to stop it from existing, would be a highly scientific tyranny, one of a kind, unique in every way there would no longer be random choices or emotional decisions by governments. Every policy or action would have scientific data to back it up. And if not, then technocrats would simply be able to influence or manipulate any given situation, environment, or reality at any given moment in order to advance a certain agenda. 
and ultimately, that agenda is maximum control of all resources, including human, to be more like a god than human. This is Big Brain Tech. Hit that like button and subscribe, then ring the notification bell for more crucial insights.